Hi. Um, so my name's Craig Waters. I'm a, a product manager for Pure Storage, and I'm not going to talk about Pure at all today. But what I want to do is, um, I just want to give you like an introduction to NVMe. Um, I use it quite a lot um, in my job day to day, and I just wanted to kind of give you some background on it. So this isn't going to be a product pitch. It's just more going to be around what's NVMe, what is it about, why is everyone talking about it, what the benefits are, and and really like to kind of give you some insight into in, into how you'd use it, what, how it could be of interest to you in your organisation moving forward. So, um, so I've got to start. I've got a bit of a taxonomy picture here. So I've got to go start around just kind of determine some of the the terms that are typically used and what they translate to when we talk about NVMe. So, you know, like. Typically, there's like three kind of like transports uh, that are used, like SAS, SATA, SAS, uh, PCIe, or it could be like Rocky or something like that. Um, and they kind of like equate to a command set. So you're probably really familiar with AHCI. That's typically what a boot uh, partition on your on your server would run from. You've obviously got then SCSI, um, you know, traditional uh, storage transport. And then we've got this new guy at the bottom here, NVMe. Um, and, then, and really, that, they're the kind of the, if you like, the translation of terms for when we talk about ca uh, command sets versus transports. Yeah. So in this case, you know, we're going to talk a lot about NVMe replacing SCSI, um, and then PCIe or one of these uh, NVMe over fabric terms replacing SAS. Um, so just want to kind of get that really clear. Yeah. So. So why NVMe, right? So you're probably going to find that pretty much any device you use today, you know, um, phone, laptop, all those consumer grade products already use NVMe. It's already been utilized, yeah? Um, what's interesting is, is that now NVMe is kind of hitting the enterprise um, space. And that's kind of unusual, because normally it's the other way around. Normally, these kind of technologies are tried and tested in the enterprise before they become consumer grade products. Um, so that's kind of an interesting kind of change to what you normally see. Um, I'm not going to go into why that is at this point in time, but you probably have a, probably got a few opinions on that. Really, the the, the value that NVMe is kind of bringing to you is this concept of parallelization of I/O. Um, I've got some more slides to kind of talk about that a bit more, so I'm not, I'm not going to kind of cover it too much. But but that's kind of the, the real big difference with NVMe is is that we're traditionally with um, seri these serial products you've got a single channel that you're running I.O. through. With NVMe, it's a parallelization of that, of that I.O. And that kind of brings out a ton of kind of benefits, yeah? Um, and really, the, like the other piece really is around this idea of like, there's a bunch of new technologies that are being used right now that traditionally haven't been considered when the likes of SCSI and stuff came into play, you know? So, you know, multi-core CPUs is a good example. You know, high density um, SSDs, you know, Flash is like, you know, we can get some really high density now in flash. How do we drive the performance out of something that's really dense? You know, what the challenges are around that. We've also got some, you know, new memory phase change uh, technologies like 3D Crosspoint. Although we, even they're having, you know, kind of some stumbling around being adopted in the market right now. Um, and then also, you know, a good enabler for this is around the very last one around high speed uh, interconnects. So, you know, we're seeing networks now, you know, supporting 50, 100 gig ethernet. You know, it's much faster and much more larger bandwidth than some of the traditional um, storage transports, about 100 meg, one gig, those sort of things, yeah? So NVMe, I think really kind of um, what's important to kind of consider with NVMe is that it's bridging this kind of price point. You've got this gap between, you know, your spinning rust and DRAM. And, and we've seen SSDs kind of proliferate into this space, and really NVMe is an enabler for that. Because what's going to happen is, is that, um, as SSDs get bigger, it's going to become just like spindles on, on uh, spinning rust. And what I mean by that is, is that as the capacities get larger, the actual performance of the drive is going to re reduce. Yeah? And you can see I've got an example here of like, you know, where we start off at really high IOPS at a, a, a small capacity. As the drive actually gets larger, then you can see that the high IOPS actually reduce considerably. And that's really the problem with SSD in its current form, where it's been encapsulated in, uh, and you know, pretty much fooling the controller into thinking that it's uh, accessing a, a spinning disk. When in actual fact, what we're doing is we're using the controller to kind of, uh, the firmware on the controller to actually kind of fool the underlying system into thinking that it's a, a, a spinning drive. When it's not, it's actually SSD. So there's a massive bottleneck brewing here. And this is what I mean by this is that, you know, with a SATA storage architecture, 
it's a single channel in SAS that's connecting all these SSDs. And, you know, that coupled with the, the size of drives, you know, we're, um, I mean, it's quite a while ago now, but Seagate kind of announced a 60 terabyte SSD. Um, you, know, it's all, you know, it's awesome from a density perspective, but the performance of that, you can see there, you know, it's 400 times slower per gigabyte, yeah? So, you know, how's that gonna work, yeah? And what I've done here is, is I've kind of shown the, um, but basically what the um, components that make up um, the, the flash translation layer from the device, the flash device itself through to the controller. And you can see here over SCSI, there's a lot of uh, translation that's going on here further down in the block layer. And this kind of equates to like, you know, more than half times the amount of uh, milliseconds for that um, IO to be driven. Now, you know, you, you look at that and you think, well, what's, you know, what, sorry, microseconds, you know, what, what's like 2.8 versus six, it doesn't seem much. But when you paralyze that over hundreds and thousands of IO commands, all of a sudden that latency becomes super important. Um, so, so what I wanted to do is was kind of show the comparison between a traditional kind of storage architecture and then what NVMe kind of provides as an example. And you can see here, like the, the challenge with SATA is, is you have this single queue, there's one channel and one queue for all those SSDs to share. And that's kind of where, you know, you're gonna see this bottleneck occurring. Whereas from an SSD, I'm gonna just come straight over here. From an SSD perspective, you actually have a direct memory mapping from the core of a, of a CPU all the way through to the SSD, um, the NAND flash chips that are on the SSD itself. So you've got that direct one-to-one -one mapping, and it basically means that you can parallelize I.O. across all those SSDs at the same time, utilizing, better utilizing the cores on your processors to actually drive I.O. in your, uh, in your infrastructure. Yeah? So, so that's kind of a, an architecture for PCIe, which is direct attach storage. But what about, you know, if I want to use remote, like if I want to use uh, NVMe over fabrics, for example. So really what NVMe over fabrics kind of brings is that it, it really eliminates this kind of idea of the out, out, outside the box penalty. And what I mean by that is, is that with DAS, you know, I'm, I'm bringing the CPU to the, the, to the storage directly. And, and that means we can get ultra low latency when that IO is being transmitted between, you know, when, when a process is being uh, completed on the CPU and then how that's being like flushed out to disk. Whereas with NVMe over fabrics, we're actually only, we're actually only um, adding like about 10 microseconds on top of that process. So even though we're going over a fabric, we're actually not changing the performance of that IO at all yet. And the other kind of key consideration here as well is, is that when you're using technologies like RDMA, you're actually reducing the amount of CPU. So that CPU that you're using to drive your hypervisor and your virtual machines, it's dedicated to running those work nodes. It's not actually being used to drive the I.O. of your VMs onto the storage system as well. So there's a huge benefit that you can gain from that processing being offloaded into your, you know, your, uh, either your NIC or your HBA onto the storage system as opposed to it being utilizing CPU that's running on your server itself, yeah? And then the third one there is just kind of showing you know, like a parallel architecture where you've got applications and servers using NVMe to drive the performance out of the storage and out of the, the flash modules that you're running on your storage system itself, yeah? So you're getting parallelization all the way through the stack. It's not just from the, you know, from the host to the storage array, but it's also within the storage array to the flash drives themselves as well. So RDMA, uh, Remote Direct Memory Access. What that means is that, um, are we, what we kind of showed in the last uh, slide is, is that the CPU on your um, hypervisor, on your operating system, is not being used to drive I.O. performance. It's actually being taken out of the equation completely. And instead what's happening is, is that that I.O. is being driven directly from the, the end storage device. Now, you know, NVMe over Fabrics comes in a couple of flavors right now. Um, InfiniBand, we're not kind of seeing that much at this point in time. Um, first off, it was kind of considered to be a good um, transport for, um, you're actually seeing stuff around TCP as well, which is kind of becoming quite interesting. But predominantly, there's kind of two main kind of uh, contenders for, for NVMe over fabrics. And so the first is um, Rocky, which is RDMA over converged ethernet. So that's using your standard ethernet um, adapter. Um, you know, it's taking advantage of things like 10, you know, uh, 40, 50, 100 gig ethernet. 
And then the second one is fiber channel over NVMe. Uh, so that's again, it's taking advantage of new, you know, performance technologies around fiber channel for 32 giggy, uh, 32 giggy, uh, those sort of things as well. But um, they're kind of the two main ones. The, the interesting thing with Rocky is is that um, a version two of Rocky was announced fairly recently, and that supports basically routing of, of uh, NVMe traffic. So Rocky version one was just um, like a direct uh, attached device. So you'd have your, your server connected to a, a top of rack switch, which would then in turn be connected to your, your storage array. Whereas with V2, you can actually route that traffic. So it can actually, actually have multiple hops. So it's kind of layer three versus layer two, that, that, kind of, that kind of thing. So I wanted to you know, just kind of show you what the, the, the packet of a NVMe kind of traffic looks like. And then also show you how you identify it, because it's, it's actually quite familiar when you see NVMe being used. Um, but, but I think it's quite of interesting. You know, they have this, the, the concept of a capsule. And you can see here, you know, you've got um, local NVMe, which is like using the, you've got your NVMe transport, which is using a local bus through memory into a PCIe connection. And then you've kind of got your uh, NVMe over fabrics on the right there. So again, it's encapsulated. But it's kind of different in how it actually is presented versus fiber channel, um, versus InfiniBand, Rocky, and, and iWalks, and other implementation as well. But, but like I said, with, with NVMe over fabrics, typically it's Rocky that's, that's been the predominant one for Ethernet, and then obviously fiber channel uh, for fiber channel as well. But if you anyone using iSCSI in the Vista implementation at the moment? OK, so everybody knows what an IQN is, yeah? OK, so. Uh, when NVMe is supported in, uh, uh, in vSphere, for example, you actually see it listed as an NQN. Okay? And, it, and it's kind of managed and, and configured exactly the same way as iSCSI. Uh, just the difference is, is that it's got an N at the beginning instead of an I. Uh, so the, the, the things that you do today when you're dealing with IQNs and iSCSI will continue to be the same things when you're dealing with NVMe over fabrics with uh, Ethernet. Uh, similar to like if you were doing NVMe and it was fiber channel, you'd be dealing with WWNs and, and, and those sort of things. So th those things don't change. And that's what's kind of really important with this, is that it's a change in protocol, but the transports are actually very similar still. There's no real change to how you do fiber channels, no real change how you do Ethernet. It's just how your, it's just the drivers that are running on either your storage system or on the hypervisor that kind of determines and supports NVMe as a protocol, yeah? Um, so the similar diagram as what I had before for PCIe, I just wanted to show it with NVMe over fabrics, and you can see again, you know, similar constraints around um, SAS and, and, and SATA being like a single queue. You know, this, in this instance, we've got multiple HPAs, but again, they're kind of um, accessing SSDs when a single queue, and then we have a single queue up into the um, for each of them in, into the actual CPUs, and then again, you know, with NVMe over fabrics, we have that. Um, connectivity from the host into the fat into the into the, the network medium be it fiber channel or ethernet but we have that parallelization again that every single cpu core has a, a direct correlation to a, an nv uh, ram module within that ssd or within that with whatever that storage device is that you're using yeah it's a massive parallelization that you're getting um from that interconnect yeah what, what NVMe over fabrics does, because, you know, like, okay, so it's really cool to see all this, but it's kind of like, well, what's the point of this? What's the value of this? So what you see today is you see, like, traditional DAS architectures being used, particularly for scale-out applications. So if you're doing things like analytics, like Hadoop clusters, those sort of things, you'll typically find that this is the architecture that's used. But the challenge with this style of architecture is that you're having to scale compute and storage together. And you can see the example here is like with a, with a DAS system, I've got many SSDs or many storage devices on a per node basis that I'm having to manage and maintain. And they're coupled to the CPUs on each of those nodes. So if I'm scaling capacity, I've got to scale CPU at the same time. I've got no choice, yeah? Whereas what NVMe over fabrics can do, because we've like eliminated that out of the box kind of um, you know, performance constraint around having a shared fabric, it basically means, and I'm sorry there's a pure storage array there, that wasn't intentional, but it's to show that you can have a shared storage system that can drive exactly the same amount of performance and you get all the benefits of a shared storage system. So, you know, you get all your, uh, you know, your data services, your snapshot in, all those kind of capabilities. And it basically means then that with a shared storage system, 
I could have multiple Hadoop clusters or multiple DAS-based um, clusters that I would traditionally use with DAS, but I'm, I'm getting that shared storage availability. I'm getting all the benefits of shared storage and not having to manage the, the application on a per instance basis, yeah? Um, so just to kind of, um, you know, consolidate and kind of finalize and just recap on these benefits. So in NVMe, there's three kind of big things here. One is, is the performance, obviously, you know, higher throughput, lower latency. The other is, is freeing, freeing up your CPU cores in your uh, compute nodes. So some of those CPUs can actually be used to consolidate further. You know, it can give you more density in the, in the compute. But also, it means you maybe need to buy less CPU as well. So maybe you don't need as many storage, uh, sorry, many compute nodes as you're running today based upon uh, SATA and, um, and SAS uh, constructs using uh, serial. And then the last one, you know, which, you know, this is, this is inevitable, this is going to happen. Like, SSDs are just going to get bigger. That's all that's going to happen, yeah? So it's really important to adopt things like NVMe to kind of be able to provide that so that you don't get uh, a similar situation. So. With SATA SSDs today, we're actually coming to this point where you're having to go and bundle you know, a bunch of SATA SSDs, similar to how you'd bundle a bunch of hard drives and spindles to get the spindle count to get the performance out. That's beginning to happen now with SATA SSDs as you kind of drive a larger scale capacity. Yeah? Whereas with NVMe, you, know, you could have a really small subset of drives, like five or 10 drives, and you can provide the performance all you need. You don't have to have that spindle count similar to uh, spinning rust. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much. If you've got any questions, I'm uh, happy to have a chat. I'm just going to stand over here, but appreciate you having a listen, yeah? Uh, and V, uh, v Brandbag rocks, uh, and I'm really happy to be presenting today. So thank you, yeah?